Hi, my name is Emily Maggioli and I am ESR number 8 of the Marie Curie Horizon 2020 project called INODC and I am based at the University of Porto. This presentation is done as part of Deliverable 3.5 of Work Package 3, named Feasible Implementable Approaches to Modeling Dynamic Converter Interactions with Large-Scale AC Systems and Wind Farms. I will be giving a brief overview of the generic wind generator type 4 dynamic model for protection studies. The contents covered are organized in the following four points. First, the context, motivation and contribution of this presentation, followed by an overview of the generic wind generator dynamic model and its applicability for protection studies. Finally, I will present an implementable approach of the converter model and protections. What is the goal of this presentation? This work is developed in the context of the increased adoption of renewable energy in power systems, which raises questions related to possible new operating conditions and behaviour for the network, and to understanding this impact on protection behaviour and why there are disturbances, which are the focus of my research. The idea of this presentation is to demonstrate the selection of the wind turbine generator type 4 model for protection and why there are disturbance studies, and how this can be implemented. First, what is the story behind the generic model? The motivation came from the need of a dynamic model to be used for large-scale network studies like planning, reliability, and the limitations of proprietary models or the complexity and issues for developing user-written models with appropriate behavior. It was the combined efforts of the Western Electricity Coordinating Council and IEEE working groups that originated generic positive sequence wind turbine generator models aimed at planning studies. They came up with a proposal of four topologies. Type 1, induction generator. Type 2, induction generator with variable rotor resistance. Type 3, doubly fed asynchronous generator. Type 4, asynchronous or synchronous generator with full converter interface. There is a second generation of the last two topologies, type 3 and type 4, which have come from further improvements. Also, just as a side note, this presentation does not cover all of these topologies in detail. For further information, please check the references at the end of this presentation. From all the topologies mentioned in the previous slide, I will focus on type 4, second generation. Firstly, because of its interest for my research, the connection of full converters to the grid to assess the impact on protection in my area. Secondly, the second generation has improvements such as some of the time constants were previously hard-coded and now can be parameterized by the user, and also the model can be used without the wind turbine model. The figure shows the components of the model. Here we have the generator converter model, and here the converter control model. And at the bottom here we have the wind turbine model. And this is the connection point with the grid. Here we have highlighted the converter generator model, which receives its commands from the converter control model. It receives the commands from reactive and active power commands. In their turn, they will go through high voltage reactive power logic which provides reactive current in order to maintain high voltage limit. And the active current goes through a low voltage active power logic before interfacing with the network. Highlighted now is the converter control model. Marked in green are some of the inputs to the model, such as the voltage at which the converter is connected or the generated active and reactive power. The fact of using the second generation model means that we can work with or without the wind turbine model. Marked in orange here, we have the reactive and active current commanded values sent to the generator model, which are limited by the current logic limit over here. The limits for the generated currents will depend on the mode selected for the converter, either active power priority or reactive power priority. This current limiting logic is of interest for protection and why there are disturbance studies. Here we have listed some of the main known limitations of the generic wind generator models. 
It should also be mentioned that there are some discussions about the appropriateness of generic models due to the accuracy loss compared to vendor-specific equipment. However, this will depend on what is appropriate or acceptable for the study you are conducting. Further limitations are that the models are not designed to use in simulations that involve severe frequency excursions. Also, protection functions of the model have to be modeled externally. The models provide a reasonably good representation of the dynamic electrical performance at the point of interconnection, not inside the wind power plant. There is a limited understanding on the accuracy of the generic model during unbalanced events. The time step of the simulations is typically 20 to 30 seconds. Finally, models are not in their final form, suffering improvement and iterations, or generations, as was mentioned at the beginning of this presentation. Why use this model in protection studies? It provides a dynamic behavior of the converter at the point of common coupling, including the emulation of primary frequency response, which is acceptable for wide area protection studies. However, it should be taken into account that this model only provides positive sequence dynamics, which can be a limitation for some protection studies. Up until now, I have been describing the generic dynamic model of the converter. Now, I will provide an implementable approach, as stated at the beginning of the presentation. The goal is to have a dynamic converter model for protection and wide area disturbance studies. The generic models mentioned before have been implemented and validated in at least two widely used commercial transient stability simulation programs, one of which, PSSE. CAPE is a protection program. This is a widely used tool by utilities for protection studies and also maintaining protection settings, containing detailed models of industry-used relays. It is possible to connect dynamic models on PSSE with CAPE for joint transient stability dynamic studies. This is achieved using what is called TS-Link, which is run on CAPE and consists of a link between both tools. To be able to run, both networks must be aligned, matching the network on PSSE with the network in CAPE. Once this is achieved, the joint simulation can be run. In a nutshell, at a defined time step, the dynamic models of the network, including the converter, are run on PSSE. These dynamic results are passed on to CAPE to check protection behavior. This will then be passed on to PSSE for the DEX dynamic results. This is performed in an iterative manner until the end of the simulation. Here you find a list of the references mentioned or used for this work, or for further details not covered in this presentation. During this presentation, we covered the origin of the generic models, followed by the brief overview of the dynamics, its applicability and limitations for protection and wide area disturbance studies. You can watch the video on wide area on our project YouTube page. Finally, it was shown an implementable approach for using the model and for dynamic studies. For further information or questions, please feel free to access our YouTube page and website or contact me via email. Thanks for watching.